Hi, this is Cass from Aussie Cass Plays, and welcome to part three of my Island Dreaming Let's Play. Uh, Kira went to work on Monday, came home, and she's come home to discover that bills have arrived, and she can't afford them. They're 676 simoleons. She got paid 360, I believe, given we only had six, though. That's not super great. So she's going to come out here and... I don't think she's brave enough to sunbathe in the nude, frankly, but she's going to come out here and maybe sunbathe for a bit and try and just clear her mind. Obviously, she could ask her mum for the money. Casey is doing very well for herself, given that she's got almost 100,000 simoleons, but she doesn't... Um, Kira doesn't want to ask. Sweetie, I told you to change outfits. That is not your swimwear. Um, can you put the swimwear on, please? Thank you. And then sunbathe in your swimwear. I felt like something went a bit wrong there. Uh, stop it. Um, see, this is why we don't sunbathe nude. Because look, there's someone right here swimming past my house. Anyway, so she's going to have a bit of a sunbathe. I don't know if I was supposed... Oh, I probably should... Hang on. Put on sunscreen. You know, believe in skin cancer in this household. We're going to slather ourselves up. This is very cute. And then she's going to have a bit of a sunbathe next to her cooler box of awesome. So even though she's feeling kind of broke at the moment and a little bit stressed, she is also like feeling like she made the right choice because... She can still, you know, relax here. She can listen to the ocean. She can be in touch with nature. And that's definitely the way to go. She's thinking about changing to a conservationist career, seeing the state of the ocean and seeing all of the rubbish on the beach over here really upset her. And I feel like she would want to actually kind of get involved in doing something about it. But I'm just going to have her get up because... It, the sun is starting to go down. So she's going to get up. Can she dive in? Well, I think I need to click on this to dive in. So she's going to swan dive into the water. And then she's going to swim across to the other side. Where she saw all the trash and all of their... Someone's snorkeling. That's cute. Yes, my girl. She's so cool. All right. I wish I could do that. I could never do that. She's going to come over here and she's going to pick this up. And she's going to beach comb again. And she's looking for trash. Is that bird okay? Are they okay? Are they like, is the green hurting them? Or are they just floating? Are they just floating? They might just be floating. Okay. I think they're all right. I think they're like fishing for fish or whatever. <gasps> what did she find? Oh my gosh. The seagull pooped on her. Bloody birds. Here I was worried about you. She's going to go over here and pick up a bit more trash. Calm down, Kira. It was just a bird. It's fine. Don't be so angry. It's fine. And she's going to snorkel. I love how there's like so many people around, including Alicia. Alicia. Is this an angry swim? She's angry swimming because she got pooped on. Honestly, the poop would have washed off by now, but it's fine. Now she's going to angry snorkel. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> ah, famous last words. Shortest series ever. Three parts. Sim gets eaten, but that's okay. <laughs> so, Oliana's inviting us to the bar for bear night. Tempting, but I'm kind of, I don't feel like I would have my phone on me. It's so kind of her to invite us out to Oh, now I feel bad. I just had it in my head that we were snorkeling and then there was an invite and I said no and I didn't really think about it. I'm sorry, Eliana. I'm going to text her when we get out. Oh, pee in the ocean. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is the face of somebody who just peed in the ocean, you guys. 
She looks so happy. Oh, that is perfect. <laughs> this game is so funny. All right, I'm going to come over here and then we're going to send that text because I feel bad. Sorry I missed your text. Oliana, that was really kind of you to think to invite me. Where is she? She's gone again. There she is, the lady with the amazing hair. Look, a pineapple plant. It's out of season, though. I feel like these are all going to be out of season. They are. Spring, summer. Yeah, summer and spring for everything. Oh, well, that's fine. Yes, I would love to go out to Desert Bloom, really? Um, no, not to Desert Bloom, seriously. Oh, look, we've got all of these tulip shells. Maybe, hang on, if I've got two of them already. Hello. This is very much like how Casey started out, just scavenging stuff. And although Casey didn't have a house, <laughs> she was living in a tent under a pine tree in a park. So, yeah, she started out a lot more poor. And in fact, Kira was also a runaway. That's actually how her and Casey met. So she started out her life living on the street and she met Kira. They used to go to the same library to, like, take advantage of the heating in winter. And Kira also loved to, you know, read and look at the pictures and stuff in the books. And Casey was kind enough to sort of look out for her and help her out with food and stuff when she had a bit spare. So that was how she ended up getting adopted by her. But yeah, anyway, even though she's feeling a little bit concerned, like she doesn't have much money, uh, she's been here before. So she's going to plunk for inspiration. I put this here so she could look out at the water while she plays. She's not that good, not gonna lie. She's getting better. She's like piano five now. The neighbors would love this because there's no windows and no doors. It's basically open. This is the openest open plan you could ever, ever have. The other thing we could do for money is check this trap because it looks like there might be a fish in there and maybe we could sell it or something. All right, here she comes. I'm going to see. It looks like there is a fish in there. The fishing trap is set, but no fish have swum in yet. It's funny. It looks like there's a fish. Maybe that's the bait. I'm going to see if there is trash here. Although, honestly, every time she... Oh, Vlad! You, you, we know each other. We do. You have fed on my mother. You have fought her you are her enemy and in fact Casey would be really upset to realize that Kira came here and didn't bring a string of garlic with her because their house at home actually has a ton of garlic in it so yeah. I might actually have Casey send her a garlic wreath or something get the heck away from my house I do not like you I do not like your pale weird face I do not like how you come to people's houses and, like, hiss and try and bite people. It is not okay. I hope you are kidnapped. No, I didn't invite you into my house. Oh, uh-oh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Come on, Kira. You can do it. I believe in you. Vlad talks the talk, but he can't walk the walk. I reckon you've got him. Come on, come on, come on. Oh no, he won. Oh, okay, maybe we should pick fights with vampires. Get out. Get away. You are my enemy. That's a bit intense, frankly. <laughs> I moved to this island to be in a beautiful tropical paradise. And you have come here and, like, been rude and tried to bite me. And it's not okay. Get out. You are not welcome. Go. Uh, ask if he's a mermaid. Are you a mermaid? <laughs> Goodbye. You are not welcome here. Go. Get out. He looks so like, oh, no, I did something wrong. Yeah, you did something wrong. Get out. 
lock front door for Vlad. <laughs> Where's Vlad? There's no Vlad option. Everyone but household members. That's fine. That's fine. Although we've got this door too. I don't trust him. Lock door for everyone but household members. All right. She's going to go sleep off her dust up and we will touch base with her in the morning. Kira's gone to work. It's the next day and she's had a scientific breakthrough. Kira was evaluating some new data when she noticed a pattern between petals and leaves that could change the world of botany forever. It could be risky for Kira to bring forward without the research to prove it, though. What should Kira do? Should she lay claim to the discovery first by publishing a paper or fully research a finding and risk someone else stealing the credit? She's going to research it. Kira spent hours researching the new findings. Just as she was about to post the discovery, she receives an email and her heart sank. A co-worker had stumbled upon the same discovery and immediately claimed it as their own. Though the research is still useful, Kira wishes that she'd spent less time doing it. Well, that's super disappointing. It reaffirms a desire for her to quit and change jobs and, like, become a cons conservationist instead because... If she's working with people who are going to steal her research, frankly, that don't even deserve her in their career. All right, our girl is home. She has enough money to pay her stupid bills and she's feeling super tense. She wants to go for like, do some exercise, have some fun. Uh, I think I might actually have her, now that she's gotten that pesky bill out of the way, I'm going to have her uh, put on her earbuds, listen to Island Radio, and she's going to go for a jog. And then I'm going to have her have some dinner and maybe change careers. Because she's got 130 simoleons under her belt. Look at her. She looks so angry though. I wouldn't want to mess with her. She's like, I will kill you all. It's fine. So she's jogging. She's contemplating work. She's contemplating colleagues who steal her research. And like her finding, she could have changed the world of botany forever. She just wanted to be sure. She didn't want to like embarrass herself in front of her colleagues or present unresearched papers. Because if you present an unresearched paper, you're really just bringing all of science into disrepute. And when you're dealing with things like, you know, big issues like climate change and stuff, then you're actually making more problems for science and more problems for people who are trying to do something about climate change because you're actually undermining the credibility of science itself. That is not okay. And she did not want to be guilty of that. And now she's feeling a bit better because she's got this all out of her system, had a bit of a jog and oh look, seagulls. <laughs> I'm very easily distracted. Okay, so she's feeling a bit better. That is the important part of this story. So I'm going to have her come back home. Oh, Casey's here. Hi, Mum. Uh, she's going to, I guess, invite her in. Uh, we don't have a lot of food, though, so I hope you're not expecting much, Mum, because, honestly, not that I think she'd admit that to her mother, because I think she'd be like, yeah, no, I'm doing fine. I'm doing great. Oh, by the way, Vlad came past last night and totally, like, distract her mum with the conversation of Vlad because Casey also hates Vlad. I'm just going to turn this off because we shouldn't have earbuds in when we're talking to our mum. I'm not going to give her a key just because she'll be here all the time. As much as Kira loves her mum, I feel like she would like a little bit of privacy. One of the reasons that she moved here was to get away from the kind of, I don't want to say jealousy because, but she'd always had K Casey to herself and then suddenly she was having to share Casey with Patchy and it kind of weirded her out. And Patchy's a weird kind of guy. I mean, he was a, he was a scarecrow, so you can expect that. But he's <sighs> things like he doesn't, he has to initiate stuff with you. You can't initiate stuff with him. He's a blank slate. From a game point of view, what I mean is he's never selectable in any of the sim menus. So like, for example, this photo here on the wall, of the, these two, I had to have Patchy take it because Casey couldn't take the photo with Patchy because he wasn't visible to her. Um, this is also why I don't have any photos. Like I have one photo of Patchy over here, um, which you can't really see that photo because I was trying to get a photo of the dog 
<laughs> and the dog moved away. And he was looking at us at the time, so I just took it. But I couldn't choose to take a photo of him. Anyway, so what I'm saying is that she's a bit uncomfortable with the whole, you know, patchy situation. And is there a vampire at my door? No. Oh, that's why Casey left. I locked my mum out. Oh, my God. I forgot. Casey, you can come inside. You can come inside. Oh, my God. Okay, I have to unlock the door cause so that Casey can come in. I wondered why she ran off. I thought she just went jogging, but I actually locked her out. Oh, my gosh. I feel terrible. Uh, unlock. All right. I'll just lock it when Vlad's here. <laughs> so she's going to switch jobs. She's like, you know what? A few guys at Peter Petals and Pods Landscaping are going to, like, let people steal my research and I file a complaint and they don't listen, then, you know, whatever. Basically, what I'm saying is whatever. Of course we'll accept their research assignment. We don't have to start work for a couple of days, so why not? Uh, let's see. Research conservation. All right. We can do that. Uh, Antoinette Gustafon. An acquaintance was telling me how much they dislike you. Try being a little nicer. Becoming disliked is a slippery slope. Well, you know what? Tell that to your acquaintance. I think we all know who you're talking about. It was Vlad. And I think we all know. By the way, Casey brought some garlic with her. Uh, Casey has very strong thoughts on vampires, so... Oh, what's she doing? She's cleaning up rubbish. She's a good mum. What's happening? I, I, what? I don't know what's happening. Extra food? What? Uh, okay. I was reaching, researching stuff, but there are people here. Up for a oh, yes. <laughs> We have Leah. It looked like you could use some food, so we thought we would drop by if you wanted some. We had plenty of extra food to share. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. That was really kind because we are actually like a little bit broke. Not going to lie. <laughs> Why did you turn up in your swimmers? That's weird. Anyway, I'm going to ask about the food that they brought. Thank you so much. That was so kind. Um, seed a little bit of conservation awareness into the conversation yeah thank you so much i'm actually not hungry that's all right i need to just put it in the fridge but thank you thank you very much and we're gonna oh we haven't had said hi to liliana yet this is the wife of the cute sim mum guess what i did i changed careers let me talk to you about conservation. Have you heard ah, about conservation? Oh, Family oriented, cheerful and good. Oh, they're a really sweet couple. I want them to be my best friends. Sorry, Casey, you've been replaced. These guys are going to be my next new best friend. She's turned into like an evangelical conservationist. Maybe I could like play for you guys. Maybe I could play uh, Luminescence. Let's see how awkward this is. <laughs> Thank you for coming, by the way. This sounds like something that um, Vlad would be into. No one's listening to my music. This is very sad. <laughs> what do people think? Did you like my song? I'm going to just put this away. Best thing about a, a laptop, if it works, is that I... Don't have to let, worry about other sims using my computer. I'm going to have a deep conversation with Leha. Leah. Everyone's having a great old chat. It's really kind that they all brought food over. I feel like Casey would be super reassured to see that. Like, she was worried that her daughter was going to be, like, sort of so completely alone in her new home and have no friends. Obviously, you know, she knew Kira was good with people, but, yeah. I think she was really worried about how Kira was going to go. But she's done really, really well. So I think Casey would be super reassured that the neighbours are just, like, bringing over random pork and feeding her and stuff. 
I realized I should have actually had her take five days of vacation because <laughs> she had like vacation days built up, but she didn't. Mistakes were made. It's fine. And how are you, Leah? I'm super excited to get to know you. I felt like maybe we got off on the wrong foot at the bar the other day, but maybe not. Like, maybe that was just me. Do you got, Do you play computer games? So, tell me about the neighbours. Who, who, who's good to know? Who's good to avoid? Blazzle Pelka. Really? Yeah, I already spotted that guy. The guy with the white suit thing on. What a dude, bro. Bye. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the food. Everyone's leaving. It's fine. Uh, oh, there's a fish. There's a fish in the trap. I'm going to go out there and check the trap, and then I'm going to have her go to bed. I can see it flash, flash, splashing around and stuff. Trap is filled to the brim with fish. Gather the fish before they break free. Um, how do I do that? Uh, empty trap? Whoa. Guess I know what I'm eating. <laughs> uh, I don't know if goldfish are any good, but that's fine. All right. I'm going to have her put those in the fridge. And then go to bed. Part of me wondered, like, I thought maybe, would she release them? But then I thought, well, no, she probably wouldn't because she is a little bit hand to mouth at the moment, honestly. And she's used to, like, she's she's used to making do with what she can find. And if she finds fish in a trap that someone's left there, then she's going to just, she's going to take the advantage of that, especially because the fish would have died anyway if they'd just been left there by whoever left the trap. So, oh no, it's Winterfest. I am probably going to have her actually go to her mum's place for Winterfest, I think, but I'm not going to do it in this part. So I'm going to finish this one here. If you've enjoyed, like and subscribe. If you've got any hot tips, if you've been playing as well and have any hot tips for things that Kira should check out, that would be great. Uh, and I will catch ah. you next time. Thanks for watching.